tab one. So we had actually started with this structure that shows how we think about the way the be organized. And we talked about having a tier one city and meeting the objectives that the council and the mayor have spoken about. Strategies and, and focus areas, but, but what we want to talk about now is strategic objectives. And again, what we're hoping to do in this next month with the council is basically develop a policy budget. What are the important things for the city, and get down to the actual programs later in the process, because the programs that we fund really ought to be aimed at achieving these strategic objectives. So this is what we, where, where we are at this point. The next thing would be developing measures and targets related to those objectives, and then figuring out which initiatives should, should flow from that. In the budget, these have been the strategic objectives that have come from our work with the council and uh, within the administration. So increasing economic vitality, diversifying transportation options, improving the quality of life, expanding sustainable, sustainable environment, increasing safety and security, all those are related to serving citizens, serving the public. What has to happen to each of those is we need measures, and then what initiatives help to accomplish those, and then what programs within those initiatives should be funded. Similarly, with financial resources, internal business processes, and employee development and growth, there are strategic objectives. One of the tools that we have implemented to help us uh, prioritize the strategic objectives is that we did a random sample of 8,500 households. And each council district had uh, a representative sample. Um, about 1,371 surveys were actually completed. And we have a 95% confidence uh, level in the results within 0.26 plus or minus. The survey was conducted by mail and by phone, and the demographics of the participants mirrored the 2010 census data. Now, one of the things you received along with this, this uh, citizen survey was also a breakdown by council district. So while we looked at it citywide, because we had geo codes, we were able to go down to census blocks. And we can, we can tell you based upon the survey what people in particular census blocks felt. Now, the reality is that <coughs> that's still not as precise as we need to be. And what we hope, what we're planning to do is, as part of the budget process, is working with each of you in your district to talk to citizens about what the survey suggests that neighborhood wants to get clarity. So we will basically drill down to, if you say the streets are the most important thing in the district, which streets are the ones that were shaded? Because we can't fix all the streets at one time. We would rather focus on the ones that provide the greatest satisfaction. Same thing with sidewalks, same thing with the types of services for youth, senior citizens, etc. This is, this matrix basically looks at the overall results of city services by citizens. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, what it says is these are the things that are of high importance but lower satisfaction. The things in the upper left-hand corner are the things where we've exceeded expectations, but they may not be as important as some of the other things that we provide. Now, Survey um, data can be a little tricky. Because if you look at exceeded expectations, where it says that the city's solid waste system exceeds expectations, but it's not important. Well, it's only, it will become important if we don't pick up the trash. So it's like city, a waste where utility services are not important until you flush the toilet and it doesn't work. So 
I think we have to we have to use some common sense as we go through and look at, at the survey results and as we talk to citizens and drill down a little further. But what it does give us a chance to do is focus on the things that if we're going to uh, add new money to the budget or if we're going to shift priorities in the budget, we need to look at those things that are of high importance and lowest satisfaction. So maintenance of streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure. It doesn't matter what part of the city, what age group, what demographic, that came out number one throughout the survey. Streets and sidewalks. Streets and sidewalks. Um, city services to low income people, city services to youth, city services to seniors, and the quality of public transportation services. Those pretty much across the board were one through five. They may shift places in different neighborhoods, but they still were pretty much one through five. So once we got this information, well, there's another way of looking at it. So if you look at the very high priority, right, overall maintenance of city streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure, it was the most important. It for the rank number one. The level of satisfaction was only 26%, which means out of these 18 things, it was next to the lowest. So between Satisfaction and importance is ranking is number one. You can look at other things on here. Let's see, let's see. Number two would be overall quality of city. I said that's wrong. Number two is city services to low-income people. Three, city services to youth. Four, uh, overall quality of parks, recreation, community services. That's that's the importance ranking uh, of these things that just to say we ought to focus on. So once we took one of those priorities, then we did a regression analysis to try to look at correlations between these variables and that priority. And that tells us again the things we're going to focus our dollars on. So with respect to maintenance of city streets and sidewalks, people want to know when we are working in the areas, what streets we're going to do next. Um, they want to manage traffic flow and congestion better and they want code enforcement, uh, a high level of code enforcement. Maintenance of city streets, maintenance of neighborhood streets, and maintenance of sidewalks in the city. Getting back to the appearance and maintenance of the city overall. This is a combination of capital budget as well as operating budget issues. Yes, stop here for a second. Are there any questions or observations here? So a second, which is uh, more on the direct services side was the quality of city services to low income people. So between these four uh, areas, it looks as though we ought to spend our time on the quality of local public health, public transportation services, focusing on police related education programs, eliminating drug traffic, that's the public safety area focusing on affordable housing and continuing education. And then the parks area, maintain the facilities and, and better programming for youth and adults. That is what came out. Now, it may be different in different parts of the city as to which of these things we need to emphasize, but as I said, you have in your packet information that talks about it by council district, each of these, each of these things, way, much greater than each of them. But what we, what we try to do is kind of give you a sense of what the survey showed and would recommend that you actually have a work session on the survey so that you can ask all the questions that you want about it. Um, to try to apply it to your district. We can have the person, the company who actually did the survey, uh, come in and explain <coughs> their methodology to you. The other thing that was done here is that they compared us to cities of our size. They compared us to cities along the mid-Atlantic. They compared us to the top-ranked cities in the country. And this is kind of our, our entry-level benchmark so that over the next few years, we can target to move ourselves up. You can set, you go back to priority one. If you look at this, uh, maybe the streets and sidewalks, Public Works recommends that our goal be that 80% of our streets be at good or better. That means they'd be great about 72 or 73. And that that will cost us about $11 million a year 
in which nine years or ten years would be different. So that would be kind of the whole Eleven million. <coughs> no, I'm talking. Eleven million. We, we put in five million dollars a year now. They said we should be at eleven. And that reports with when when the auditor did his, his audit, while he said we need two hundred seventy one million, we said we need two hundred thirty million. It was a lot of money, no matter which one. The way the, the public works department recommends we go about it, uh, if, if we did eleven million dollars a year, and some of it was rebuilding, some of it was uh, maintenance, some of it was slurry sealing to maintain. That over time we would catch up in a, in a short period of time. Oh, no, I'm sorry, a, a defined period of time. Sure. We want to show here's how we want you to help us determine what the policy would be. We want to do it in 10 years, we want to do it in 15 years. If so, here's how much money we have to allocate to that particular thing. And so citizens say this is the most important thing to them. This clearly should be one, be one of the things we focus on in, in our coming budget. Yes. Realist. Um, first of all, I, we plan to do this survey every year for a while. Yes. Well, we're going to try to find the money. I think it was cut off, but. Targeted 
his skills and um, desires were targeted towards the kind of job that he would want to do and the training that was necessary, as opposed to just sticking him in a job and checking out the box. So I don't know if increasing athletic programs participants by 25% is the right measure, but those are the kinds of things that we need to do on the soft services side, on the human capital side. Okay. So just to make sure I'm clear as to what you're if I'm looking at the budget and I, I want to be responsive to the survey and I want to make changes based on the survey, $11 million for infrastructure, I get that. Would we be able to anticipate in this budget based on number two priority, in as much that it's lots of uh, human capital building, soft would we also have some reasonable benchmarks that is responsive to the survey with a budget that we think would be necessary to meet those thresholds? That's the plan. Okay, good. Yes. Good. And those would be the kinds of, that would be the kind of information that each one of your departments will start when they're putting that budget together to be responsive to achieving those kinds of objectives. I would say yes, but let me take you through the next few slides and I'll show you more how it gets to be. In fact, if you look in under tab two in the book that you have, that's the one, the one that says draft. What we've done for each of the focus areas as well as the council priority areas is we have a list of current initiatives, those that were identified in either of strategic planning uh, document or some commission or uh, the community survey. We're also hoping to get information from the council as to what they think those initiatives ought to be that move to help us address the overall objective. So we'll have a filter, and this is what the departments are doing with all their programs. This is their initiative, rather. They, they can check five, the five most important things here, whether it's a mayor or council, I'm sorry, mayor, actually the top, <coughs> the top really ought to be the citizen survey, which is what we said. <laughs> <laughs> so citizens, okay. number one, <laughs> then the mayor, <laughs> then the council, and then We'll look at these other things. <laughs> and we'll, we'll fix it. This is the draft. We'll fix it. That's pretty good. Someone else whispering in the yeah. No, ma'am. Yeah. We, we, we had this conversation. We had it twice. But um, somehow we messed up. But we'll, we'll fix it. Um, at any rate, so you get to check five and the, the five most relevant things. And then as a result of this, will drop the initiative into one of these boxes. And those are things we'll do that between the council, citizens, the mayor, and others. We'll, we'll come up with the rankings. And that's what we think we ought to be doing. Now, it may be that the council and the mayor have a longer term viewpoint than the citizen in the neighborhood about what needs to be done. There was one thing on here about um, uh, stormwater rates, stormwater, the stormwater system that was seen as being low importance, but maybe low, low, low importance and high satisfaction, moderate satisfaction. That doesn't mean it doesn't have to be funded because the Chesapeake Bay Initiative is the Chesapeake Bay Initiative. We have to do those things. They're going to cost us money. We've got to figure out how to collect and build the system so that we spend, don't spend all of our money on maintenance as opposed to CIP projects. So, We'll have to be able to stand tall and explain that to citizens. But the goal is to go out to every council district through this process, explain the process we're going through, find out what's important to citizens. We'll use the clever technology there to have them rank things. So you <coughs> have that information. And you can further validate the information that's in the book. So it's, it's a joint set of policies set by executive and the legislative body. Yes, Mr. Marshall, I'm looking at, um, and, and maybe it's 
Is the survey tool in the document? The survey the tool, tool itself? Maybe I and, and okay, but more uh, more importantly, if you can help me see where this particular prioritization of services is reflected, that's fine. I, I get. So we can give the survey. Okay, that's not good. I am looking at a question which um, asks which three of the services listed below do you think should receive the most emphasis from city leaders over the next two years? Mm -hmm. And I don't see this set of results captured. So the top item is quality of public education for grades K through 12. The second <coughs> item is employment opportunities. And the third item is high school graduation. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not seeing, I didn't see captured, and I just might have overlooked, because I was looking, I have to say I was looking through the results at the same this time. This was only meant to be an example. I got you. So all we did was give an okay. example. And okay. what we're recommending you is that you actually do a work session just on the survey results. Okay. Okay, because they, they, they give a lot of different information. Right. And the other one of the things about the survey results is in many cases you'll see a lot of undecided. And that's actually good because it just it gives us an opportunity for us to get more information out of the citizens, mm -hmm. let them know about what we're doing, and they can be convinced one way or the other. Mm -hmm. that if we say that we're going to do more and actually do it, those other sides become satisfied or greatly satisfied. Okay. okay so we have the opportunity for that anyway. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You almost, you want, it's like, we must be meeting enough because it's like we almost, you answer something that, we're just about to ask, so we must be meeting a lot. You know, like they say, almost read each other's minds. So that's a good thing. Those persons that fell in that category of the neutral stage didn't make a response one or the other. In lots of the survey, uh, that accounts for almost 30% of those that are in total in the survey. So you have. 30% that is sat good to satisfy, and then you've got 30 that just says nothing, basically, and you've got another 30 or so, you know, average, that says not too good. That's a huge gap of people in the middle, um, and I really would be interested in making sure that as a part of our strategy this year, before we do the next survey, that there is a, some intentional effort that is made as to how we turn those, turn that huge percentage of no response to response. <coughs> is that something that the consultant saw as a major uh, weakness of the survey and a process of how we can strengthen it through the process? What he said was that's not abnormal okay. for the first time we do a survey. What and it gives you, it's an opportunity for you to actually touch those citizens. But you have to go out and talk to them, which is what we're doing with the council sessions, council level sessions, and also get more information out to them. So if we say, for example, that the most important thing to citizens, that they almost unanimously agree upon is streets and sidewalks, and we put together a plan, we need to publicize that plan. Here's what we're going to do, here's how much money is going to be in the budget. So you will have before you, I think that's actually at your next council meeting, a proposal to amend the budget, CIP budget, by $10 million from the state, which would take our streets budget from the $5 million that's already in the budget to $10 million. We take our sidewalks budget from, I think, $800,000 to $1.6 million. So what we've started doing is working with the state on that, on that money so that we can put more into these things, the things that citizens say are important. But we need to, once we decide to do it, we need to publicize it. Tell them what, what, how much money is going to be there, when we're going to public, when we're going to pave your streets and stay on top of them. And with that, one of the things I observed, and I'm not going to say anything else, that in the survey is that a large percentage of them found the notices of information in their water bills or utility bills as one of the most effective ways of receiving information, which is, uh, which I found to have been very interesting. 
that's a pretty inexpensive way of getting information. Yes. So we're, we're, we're trying to take note of what we learn in, in the survey so we can be more effective. And, and we could also send information out through you. You're sending information out to your constituents. We need to make sure we give you more information about it. Yes. The, um, the amount of money to bring our streets and highways up to snuff, I heard you say 271 million. I thought the auditor said something closer to 400 million. No, I think his number was 271 and ours was 230. And it's, that's a whole lot of money. Um, well, just want to touch base with that. But the real question has to do with this notion of tier one city. I think we all agree that we'd love to have a tier one city. Uh, but inclusive in a tier one city is the need to have a triple A bond rating. Has there been any real analysis on the amount of pain that it would take for us to get to a tier, I mean to a triple A bond rating measured against uh, the small benefit from what experts tell me of going from triple a, a double A plus to triple A. Uh, and yes, you, you do need to make sure that you've got a, a healthy savings account, rainy day account, not a problem. But you also have to cut your poverty rate in half. There's nothing in, I'm aware of in our budget that reduces poverty in this year's budget or previous ones. And so my concern is this, this odyssey of chasing after tier one city with triple A bond rating is a bit empty if we don't fix the poverty pro pro problem. Councilor Rick, if I could respond to that. I think there are three areas in the budget that are working concert. One is investing in areas of the city that will increase our assessed value so that we actually have more money as a, as a municipal body. So between <coughs> 2009 and the 2012 budget, we lost $1.2 billion worth of assessed value, which cost us $15 million a year. Most of that money was lost, most of that value was lost in residential, not in commercial. Commercial office pretty much stayed flat. But that is the area where we can make the biggest change if we can get more investment in in along the river, and along in and along the river, again, along the river, not in the river. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, maybe in the river. I'm going to go there. But um, the areas that we talked about were along the river, in the bottom, on the boulevard, uh, along near the port. That's where money was put in the budget to begin investment so we could start bringing up that valuation. The other area, was focusing on the VIEW program and the, the uh, pipeline program, the jobs pipeline program, so that we could get more people into jobs. And the focus has been on people who live in public housing, so that we start eating into the poverty rate at the same time. Um, and, and you and I actually have talked about how that might best be done, and you, we're actually getting some advice from you on how to make that program more effective. But I'm talking third, about city budget money versus state money. The city budget money in the city budget money in is more state money, and what we're doing is targeting the state money as opposed to we're trying to be more effective with the state money because the city program has been more effective on a case by case basis than has the review program, which is a, the uh, alternative to um, TANF. So. That program has primarily been, been focused on the way the federal government works, which is you have X amount of time to get a job, here's a job, put you in the job, we check you off, and that's the success. But six months later, you may be gone. Three months later, you may be gone. We're finding that if we can test aptitude and desire and get people some training along those two things, those two axes, and then place them in a job that a, a employer wants, so it's demand side driven. Employees are saying we need these kinds of people. They need this level of training. We'll train them. 
we have paper training, and then people get the jobs and they stay. That's working much, much better. The third no thing is dealing with public housing. To the massive number in the uh, no, 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 no denying that. Uh, the question is where do we get the additional money? And that starts with the first one. We increase assess the value so you have additional money to spend on those programs. Either that or you get to cut what you have. So we can't cut our way out of this, we can't raise taxes to get our way out of this. We've got to be more efficient and invest in things that raise our assessed values. And then invest that money in the human capital side. But the yes. point is if you're going to put an unprecedented amount of money in savings in pursuit of uh, and at least of gold, because we're not doing the other half of the equation, at one point does it stop making sense to do that when you could put that money and invest in elevating these people out of body? And, those and everybody the, wins. Those are the policy discussions we're trying to listen. That's exactly the kind of conversation we want to have. I just want to be clear. We, as a council, nor as an administration, can actually raise the assessed values. The state code <coughs> lays out the terms of how that's done. We just have to comply with it. Yes. Our goal is to increase the assessed value by doing things that make the value more attractive yes. to purchase. Yes, increase, increase the investment and therefore increase the overall value. Yes, that's what I meant. Thank you for the clarification. Well, yeah, I think it's what you said. I just wanted to clarify. what I meant. So <laughs> I have one question. I, sure. I read through it and I didn't see it. It may be that on my first two swipes just glossed over. But were these surveys conducted? This was survey was conducted in March of this year. Was ETC Institute provided with the old council districts or the new council districts? The new council districts. Thank you. I just want to um, know um, whether or not we can have further data analysis by district. Yes. And so who would I direct my queries to? Well, it depends on the query. But I will start with Kelly and I Foster. Okay. And we'll try to get the data for you, get the analysis done for you. Or We've made it available in digital form to each council member and to uh, lose office. So when you data. say it, so the raw data is available that could be dumped in out, or you're talking about run the, this run right here? Oh, no, we have zero. We can, we, can, we can do further analysis for it. Okay. Yeah. Or help contract for it, depends on how, not how detailed not, it is. Not, no, the basic kind of things. All right, we have yeah. one or two people who do the rest of the analysis. Okay. The only one. So it's one of them. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my question is your response is that you break the responses down, but you have an equal number from each district, or because, I mean, you said that out before, you surveyed an equal amount from each district, but did the re responses reflect the equal number from each district? If they didn't get a response, they went back and continued until they got something that was roughly approximately equal in, in each district. <coughs> and, and we had demographics by male, female, black, white, old, young, and different parts of the city. Yeah. So, do we need... Okay. Uh, so, if I just take the raw number of surveys, 1371 divided by 9, 152 people basically in each of the districts. And then in each of those, about 76, 78 were female and the rest were male for each of the districts? Or is it just we took what we could get? Yeah. It's just in Mr. Tyler's district, it's probably harder, more difficult to get the same racial breakdown as it would be in Miss New Bills or Miss uh, Robertson's district. We can actually give you we can give you the demographics by district. That would be great. That would be great. We can do that. All right. Uh, yes. Any overlay of these findings with um, 
things like, for example, in my district there was a charrette. Fairly significant number of participants. Any overlay in terms of what came out of there as priorities? Uh, so we would take the information that came from um, citizens. It actually wouldn't be a citizen survey in this particular case. No. Citizens right. or a council initiative. Okay. So well, in, in the chart I showed you. to look at that information right. as well as what comes out. This is not, this doesn't cover everything. Okay. But if you look at tab two where we, where we started listing out the kinds of things, that, that chart right there. Right. Well, that listing right there. So we would want from you those things that you think ought to be on by each of the folks here. And I'll, we're going to come around to each of you and interview you to find out what's important to you. Thank you. Sure. Um, the Planning Commission has been working on the Planning Commission Act since 